Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. On December 28, 2013, the acclaimed astronomer Halton Arp passed away at the age of 86 in his home in Munich, Germany. Arp posed a challenge to the very foundations of modern cosmology, a challenge that only grows more relevant with new, astonishing discoveries. We present Wal Thornhill as we honor Arp's remarkable contributions to science and astronomy. I was first introduced to Halton Arp's work by Mel and Amy Aitchison after one of our very first meetings in Portland, Oregon. They could see the relevance of Arp's discoveries to the electric universe that I was then presenting. That was in the mid-90s. In September 2000, I had my first meeting with Halton Arp in Portland, once again at one of the Electric Universe meetings. And it was quite a historic meeting because of the other people who were there, in particular Tony Peratt, uh, who is known for his uh, groundbreaking work in plasma cosmology. And the input from both of these people to the Electric Universe has been considerable. It was only a month later in October that I actually shared the stage in London uh, with Halton Arp. Unfortunately, he was busy at the time involved with a filmmaker making the documentary The Cosmology Quest, which is now available in, on DVD. Halton, known as Chip Arp, was a professional astronomer who, earlier in his career, conducted Edwin Hubble's Nova search in M31. He earned the Helen B. Warner Prize, the Newcomb Cleveland Award and the Alexander von Humboldt Senior Scientist Award. For 28 years, he was staff astronomer at the Mount Palomar and Mount Wilson observatories. While there, he produced his well-known catalogue of peculiar galaxies that are disturbed or irregular in appearance. Arp discovered that many pairs of quasars with extremely high redshift values are physically connected to galaxies that have low redshift and are known to be relatively close by. Yet according to the Big Bang expanding universe, the high redshift quasars must be located far behind the nearby galaxy. Because of ARP's observations, the assumption that high redshift objects have to be very far away, on which the Big Bang theory and all of accepted cosmology is based, has to be fundamentally re-examined. While mainstream cosmology has come to embrace the story of the Big Bang and the expanding universe, Cosmologist Carl Sagan noted the challenge that Halton Arp's discoveries pose to the standard theory. In his 1980 bestseller Cosmos, Sagan wrote, There is nevertheless a nagging suspicion among some astronomers that all may not be right with a deduction from the redshift of galaxies via the Doppler effect that the universe is expanding. The astronomer Halton Arp has found enigmatic and disturbing cases where a galaxy and a quasar, or a pair of galaxies that are in apparent physical association, have very different redshifts. However, some believe that institutional science's response to Arp's challenge is a disturbing example of political suppression. Arp's life story exemplifies everything that's wrong with modern showbiz science. His paper, Companion Galaxies on the Ends of Spiral Arms, which offered a fundamental challenge to Big Bang cosmology, had sub-Romanian Chandrasekhar's scrawl across the top corner, this exceeds my imagination. That may have been so, given Chandrasekhar and those like him had a great deal to lose, but it was not a scientific reason for rejection of Arp's observations. However, Arp's telescope time was curtailed and he was forced to continue his research in Germany. Halton Arp has been dubbed a modern Galileo because other scientists refuse to see what is obvious even to amateur astronomers, that low redshift galaxies are often found connected to high redshift companions. Clearly, most of the redshift is intrinsic to the companions. At a single stroke, Arp removed the foundation for Big Bang cosmology. He had, in fact, proven Edwin Hubble, his mentor, correct. For Hubble had written in the Royal Astronomical Society monthly notices in 1937, and I quote, if the redshifts are a Doppler shift, the observations as they stand lead to the anomaly of a closed universe, curiously small and dense, and it may be added, suspiciously young. On the other hand, if redshifts are not Doppler effects, these anomalies disappear and the region observed appears as a small, homogeneous, but insignificant portion of a universe extended indefinitely both in space and time. 
End of quote. The irony is that the constant defining the hypothetical rate of expansion of the universe bears Hubble's name. The winners rewrite history. Arp proved Hubble right. We live in a universe extended indefinitely, both in space and time. Halt and Arp believed in the scientific approach more strongly, it seems, than do mainstream scientists. Arp notes that his opponents invariably stated that, and I quote, the observations cannot be accepted because there's no theory to explain them, end of quote. Of course, the companion statement was always, and I quote again, there is no need to modify conventional theories because there are no valid observations which contradict them. Clearly, these two statements have always provided the perfect double bind against progress in the subject. ARP has had dramatic confirmation, which involved also Sir Fred Hoyle, Geoffrey and Margaret Burbage, and Jayant Nalika. And he says, with one object, NGC 3516, we had confirmed one, the alignment of quasars along the minor axis, that is the spin axis of the parent galaxy. Two, the decay of the redshift and increase of luminosity as the quasars travelled outward. Three, their evolution into companion galaxies. And four, and very important, the quantization of the evolving redshift steps. Arp writes, Since science is supposed to be characterised by successful prediction, it is significant to note that this most important single observation of quasars being ejected from an active low redshift galaxy was rejected without ever being sent to a referee by that leading journal of trustworthy and important results, Nature magazine. Arp also writes, The most influential people in the field in their jovial camaraderie would simply ridicule anyone who had reported discordant results. How can one fight rumour? I think the only answer is that one must fundamentally change the structure of academic science. Communication must be directly to fellow researchers and the public with no chance of censorship. The cancelling of ARP's telescope time and the suppression of all discovery mode programs is a testimony to the extreme fear that the opposing side has of this kind of research that they would ruthlessly seek out and subdue this small effort. On the other hand, it raises the question of whether the enormous financial, engineering and administrative effort put into astronomical research today is being wasted at the point of application by scientists who believe they already know all of the important answers. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.